down, it would take 35 to 40 of them to buy a gallon of gas. So that should show you what real money uh, will do versus the fake fiat money that we got now. Now some preppers, they just almost refuse to buy silver. They put all their money in preps. And you know that's fine. Prepping's a guessing game. You're guessing about how bad will things get, what will I need, when will I need it, how much will I need. And uh, I look at this as kind of a wild card. Precious metals. Uh, silver and gold has been around for thousands of years. You can read about it back in the Bible. Abraham buying grave plots with silver coins. Silver and gold has never been worth nothing. This will be worth nothing one day. It's worth nothing now. It has no intrinsic value at all. Silver uh, has value in the way of you use it in electronics. You use it in precious metals. I mean jewelry. Gold has a intrinsic value. It's never been worth nothing. Uh, this is already worth nothing. People just have not discovered it yet, but I think in the near future you'll see this go to nothing. I keep some cash in my cache uh, just in case a terrorist act or something hits and I can't get to the bank. The banks are not open. Uh, I keep a couple of thousand bucks uh, just in case I have to need some cash to, to get by on, but I don't, I don't store a lot of my wealth in cash. Now, I want to talk to you today about buying precious metals. Now, there's different types of metals. You can buy gold. Uh, this is a Cougaran uh, from South Africa. And uh, it's a one ounce piece of gold. These sell right now for around $1,600. Uh, I've had mine for years. I didn't pay that much for it, but uh, that's what they're trading for. This is great for storing wealth. Now, listen. I'm talking, this video is mainly to preppers that's already got your food supply, you've already got your water supply, you've already got your uh, your security, you've already got your weapons, your ammunition, you've already got a place to go. This is after you get all that done that you think you're going to need to survive the initial six months or year and you still have some wealth, you still have some money, then you buy this. If I had not done anything to prepare, I wouldn't run out and buy a gold cougaran or anything else like this. I would take care of my preps first, but after that, that's when you buy this. Now, a gold cougaran or gold maples or golden eagles, all that's great ways to preserve wealth, uh, but it's a real poor bartering tool. And the reason it's such a poor bartering tool is because it's worth so much. I mean, a one ounce gold round, I mean, like I said, today it's worth 1600 bucks. As our currency goes down, this will continue to go up. And, uh, you know, it'll be hard to barter this. It's great for storing wealth. It's small, and you, you get a lot of uh, dollars per coin. But, you know, I don't have a lot of gold pieces. I do have some. This is a 10-ounce silver bar. There again, it's pretty good at storing wealth, but it's a real poor barter until there's just too much here. This bar right here right now is worth probably... Uh, in the $400 range, give or take a few dollars, it depends on the silver market. Uh, these are great for storing wealth. They're a real poor bartering tool. Uh, the next thing you have is just generic rounds. Uh, a generic round would be something like this. This is a Liberty. I don't know if you can see that. This is a Liberty. It's just a generic coin. Uh, this is another one. This one right here actually commemorates Desert Storm. And uh, it was put out in 1991, I think. But it's just a, what they call a generic silver round. It's a one-ounce silver piece. It's just uh, it's just generic. I have some of these that say happy birthday, uh, all kind of stuff on them, all kind of commemorations, uh, and those are fine. Then you have what they call the buffaloes. Uh, it has an Indian on one side. It has a buffalo on the other. Uh, these are just one ounce gold pieces. You can see it has a real smooth finish on the on the edge of the coin, uh, which makes it a less valuable coin uh, because it'd be easier to shave that off and steal metal from the coin. But that don't that don't happen a whole lot, but it does happen. But these bullions here, you can buy usually two to three dollars over spot. 
let's just say for instance silver's bringing like it is now 36 37 dollars an ounce usually you can buy these for around 39 to 40. Uh, then you move on up to what they call the silver eagle uh, and you'll notice the edge here is kind of like our quarters and stuff nowadays it's kind of a grooved edge it keeps people from shaving uh, the edges off you know our treasury department still does that on our coins I guess they're trying to trick us into thinking they're worth something. Uh, back when you had silver in the coins, it prevented people from shaving the coins. Nowadays, nobody would want to steal the metal in our coins because it's worthless. But I guess they're just trying to, to trick us into believing they're worth something. But anyway, you see the grooves here. This makes us a higher dollar coin. It's also minted by the United States Mint. It's got the eagle. Uh, you know, I was raised in America and you're used to seeing this type of stuff and uh, this would be more recognizable if you had to use this for a bartering tool one ounce rounds are, are a pretty good bartering tool uh, you know still this might be more than you want to spend if you was in a bartering situation so uh, you know on the, on the silver eagles like this you could expect to pay probably five to six bucks over spot but just because it's a nicer coin uh, my favorite thing in silver is what we call junk silver and you can just hear that sound junk silver is not junk junk silver is coins that was minted 1964 and back anything that you see 1964 and back in dimes quarters or half dollars are silver dollars or 90 percent silver now that don't count for nickels but uh but quarters dimes and half dollars 1964 and back is 90 percent silver and right now they're bringing, depending on who has them and and uh, the su supply and demand, about 40 times the face value. So, uh, but this would be a great bartering tool. Like I started out with, you can take one dime that's 90% silver and go to a, uh, a flea market because that kind of stuff will be established. If our currency collapses, it might take three months or six months, but eventually there'll be little community flea markets and bartering centers because people's got to, you know, they got to continue to get goods they need. I mean, uh, you'll have people that'll have clothes that have gotten too small for their kids. They'll be there trying to trade for some bigger clothes. I mean, shoes, food, every kind of thing you can imagine. There'll, there'll be those kind of things pop up. And when those kind of things pop up, you know, silver and gold has always been money.